Okay, in this video, let's take a look at the first Marks dinosaur playset from 1957. I've got all the components laid out here, and this might be of use to someone trying to complete this set, uh, because I'm going to go over what it contained originally. Uh, let's take a look at the box first. I'm going to move the camera around here. Here we go. This is the original box. This uh, set is Prehistoric Times number 3390 by Mark's designation. And uh, that's supposed to say uh, Series 1000 there. They always put that on there, but it's got some tape there that uh, was taken off that obscures that. But anyway, there's the Mark's logo from 57. It changed a little bit over the years. And their mascot, that Magic Marksy, is not on this box. I think he, I'm not sure when he appeared, probably a little later, because he was on some of the later sets. Uh, this is uh, the side panel there. It's got uh, the cool artwork that kind of looks like uh, old woodcuts or whatever. Here's, uh, now this part here folds out to make a handle, but... Uh, the cardboard is old, and I don't do that because there's no point in taking a chance on tearing that off. Here's the one of the end panels. This says H. Bailey. Evidently, the person who owned this and who ordered it, I, I guess that's a shipping date there, 1210. They probably ordered this for Christmas in 1957 because it was for sale in the Sears catalog. And... Uh, that was probably marked with their name on it. And it actually has a label on the bottom of the box, which I'll show. There's the other side panel. And there's that one. Series 1000, number 3390. And it gives the address of marks there. All of them pretty much had that on there. And uh, world's largest manufacturer of toys. And at the time, they probably were. Here's this uh, label I was talking about, the shipping label. Get it to focus. Sears Roebuck and Company to Roosevelt. I guess that was the name of a, a town. Cash on delivery. They used to do that back in the old days. H. Bailey A4. So anyway... There we go with that. Now we'll uh, take a look at uh, the components here. Now this set came with uh, 12 cavemen and 23 dinosaurs. And I'm going to go over uh, each one. The Marx dinosaurs uh, were included in play sets by mold group. And they were color matching within that mold group. This is the large mold group. This is the Brontosaurus, and if the camera will focus correctly, I can actually show it gives the name, and uh, yeah, there's Brontosaurus, and 70 feet long. It's Anyway, uh, this has the large circles on the bottom of the feet. In the revised mold group, that Brontosaurus has small circles. That came later. Here's one uh, of the favorite collector pieces. It's the Tyrannosaurus, affectionately known as the pot bellied T-Rex by collectors. And on the tail there, it says Tyrannosaurus and 50 feet long. Right there. These things have great texture and they're really tough. I've only ever had one Mark's dinosaur to break. Of all of them that I've owned and set up and fooled with. Okay, here, this is the Chronosaurus. It looks like a plesiosaur, but this is the Marx Chronosaurus. And this, there you go, Chronosaurus, uh, 50 feet long. This uh, is in, a, this is a premium piece. They tried to include one premium piece 
in each play set. This is in metallic green. You don't see these very often. I'm not sure what these sell for now. A few years ago when I was completing my sets, I mean, a piece like that would probably sell for $75 or $100. I don't know now what they'd sell for. You don't see them very often. This is the medium mole group. There are six dinos in Oh, yeah, the designation for the large mole group is PL749. That's neither here nor there, but that's the way Mark's designated, and I'm trying to be complete in this video. This is PL750, the medium mole group, and as you notice, now the large mole group had one that wasn't in a matching color, this Chronosaurus, because it was a premium piece. The large mole group is probably the only mole group that commonly did not come color matching because they tried to put the one premium piece of the larger creatures. Usually, you know, it could be either one of the three, and they were usually in metallic silver. Those command somewhat of a premium, maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks, maybe just 25. I don't know, because there were a lot more of them. There was also uh, like a, a shade of brown that these sometimes came in, and that's even rarer. Well, it's probably as rare as the metallic green. I'm not really sure, but it's harder to find. Anyway, the medium mole group has uh, six dinos in it. Here's the Ankylosaurus. Pteranodon. Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, here's an odd looking guy, kind of popular with collectors, Hadrosaurus, he's another duckbill, and uh, he's he got his head kind of cocked to the side and he's got one uh, hand up like he's waving. And here's uh, the other duck build, a Trachodon. Now, this was as paleontology understood things back in the late 50s, and things have changed a bit. Like, the Brontosaurus was later discovered to be a Camarasaurus skull on a, the skeleton of an Apatosaurus. So pretty much the Brontosaurus started being known as Apatosaurus. And as far as I know, they still call them that. And uh, there's, I don't think there is, even is a trachodon these days. They have duckbill dinosaurs, of course, but uh, I think they got rid of the trachodon designation. But now that's paleontology. This is toys. So as far as the toy dinosaurs go, there is a brontosaurus. There is a trachodon. This is correct for the toys, even though it might not be correct for modern day paleontology. Now. This uh, seven-piece group here is the small mole group. It's designated as PL755. Here's uh, one of the Plagiosaurus. And uh, get that to focus. Eh, it does a little bit. We're not going to worry about that too much for this. Anyway, there are two Plateosaurus in that uh, mole group, and they vary uh, just very slightly by the placement of the name, really, on the tail. This is the Synognathus, and a lot of these technically wouldn't be dinosaurs. They would be like early reptiles, but uh, for the purposes of this, they're dinosaurs. This is a Triceratops, has a thicker horns. In the revised mole group, they redid Triceratops and it has thinner horns. I like the original better. Here's the, the uh, Spinacodon. When I was a kid, I could tell you how to spell Spinacodon, but I couldn't uh, tell you uh, common things that other people might know because I, you know, I played with these things so much. Here's one of the dimetrodons from uh, the small mole group. And you notice that all of these dinos, all seven of them, are color matching because uh, they came from the same mole grind for this. They just, evidently, they just dumped them out, and when they cooled, they assigned them to a playset box. Now, there were uh, two shots of the uh, small mole group. This one 
is in the gray, but it's slightly marbled. Uh, Marks would reuse certain plastic and drizzle it in with the other plastic, you know, because it was fairly expensive and they wanted to get the use out of it. So uh, uh, it would result in marbling, which collectors really appreciate because it individualized the figures. The later Marks plastic didn't do that. In around 1964 or so, Marx changed his plastic. And I don't think it's really understood exactly why, but some people say it was because the government mandated the lead-based paint for the color pigment be taken out of it. I've seen that in interviews and things. A lot of the people that actually worked for Marx said that they changed it just because the plastic came out of the molds easier, so I don't know. This is a Dimetrodon. As you can see here, it's got some slight marbling. You can tell it more right there in the cell. And uh, it's got some white and some black marbled in. I, I found that it's more common just to have the black. But occasionally you see other colors. Sometimes you see like a, a purplish look to it, which is probably some other colors that were mixed, you know. And, Ended up looking kind of weird. There's the other Dimetrodon. And as you can see, these things are really sculpted well. The reason why collectors and kids back then liked them so much. And uh, here's the other Triceratops in this mold group. Marbling doesn't show as much on most of these, but uh, it's, it's very subtle. And uh, there's the Spinacodon for this mold group. And here's the Sinognathus for this one. See if I can get it to focus there for that little guy. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, anyway, uh, like I said, there uh, in this uh, set there were uh, the 23 uh, uh, dinosaurs included, which is three from the large mold group, six from the medium mold group, and two shots of the uh, small mold group, which had seven each, that's 14, so that's 23 dinos. And uh, then you had the cavemen here, that's uh, PL746, I think. They came in two colors. In each caveman mold group, there are six poses, one of each. And these are sculpted really well. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna hold a piece of corrugated cardboard up here so we can get this thing to focus. I want you to see the sculpting on these things. How detailed that looks. So anyway, you had the one guy, you know, with uh, the rock over his head. Here's the walking guy with the club. Looks like he means business there. Oh, that one's accidentally focusing. What do you know? And uh, here's a guy with another type club with a rock and a stick, probably like a stone axe or whatever, and a knife. And here is uh, a crouching guy. Looks like he's trying to start a fire with some rocks. Here's another crouching guy. It looks like he's uh, skinning uh, a small animal, maybe a rabbit. And here is the short caveman with the spear. And uh, there are two sets of the cavemen. The back set is in the cream or beige color. The front set is in the tan color or light brown. And uh, here's the uh, two stumps and dead tree. Those came from the same mold, I'm pretty sure. They use, they're color matching. There's the dead tree. And these are in hard plastic. Whereas most of this stuff is in the soft plastic.
that's the large stump and here is the uh, here's the small stump and even the stumps are sculpted really well you know you can see the wood grain there and then uh, I mean, I'm not going to hold each one of these things up. Uh, here's the palm trees. You got uh, each palm tree uh, mold group had uh, these four repeating uh, pipes. You have this the large one, single trunk, had the uh, medium one, double trunk, and the two small ones, double trunk. You had the four fern bases. And then uh, you have these uh, palm fronds. There are the seven of those in that mold group. And they're all color matching within that set. And it, you know, it has like a, a little protruding hole like that you can put down over the tops of the palm trees and it stays pretty well. And here are the ferns. There are two of the four leaf ferns and uh, two of the three leaf ferns. And you can switch these out and put them in different bases and all that, you know. And also, uh, this vacuform uh, terrain piece has holes in it that you can put the ferns in there if you want to. You have that option that way. And, there we go. And you got a booklet. These booklets were really common back in the day. They gave them away at hobby shops, and uh, you got one in each uh, playset. But nowadays, uh, you know, they're like everything else after all that time. They're kind of hard to find. And, uh, you know, it, it goes into detail. It has pretty cool illustrations in there, and it goes into detail about each of the different dinosaurs and and uh, here's a timeline in the middle here, and it gives that man, you know, is uh, really recent. And, uh, you know, they, they included everything, even though they delineate in here that they actually lived at different periods. But they knew that kids wanted to play with cavemen and dinosaurs because of the movies, you know, had them fighting each other. And so they wanted uh, to include all that. There's a brontosaurus, a chronosaurus. And uh, there's the Triceratops and the Tyrannosaurus. So there you go. That uh, number of that book, not that it matters to anybody right now, but it's uh, P-56-1. P and when those, you know, you can find those on eBay a lot of the time, and usually they're, you know, in pretty bad condition. They seem to sell for about 10 or $20 and in beat up condition. They, they would probably sell for more in nice condition. And I am now going to pause the video and set it up and finish up. Okay, there's my setup. Of course, the fun of these, you know, for kids, especially back in the day, you can set them up anyway and play with any part of them and make up your own stories and I'm going to take the camera off and zoom it around and we'll get a pterodactyl's eye view of this thing. Kind of got the cavemen divided up into little groups like from different tribes, you know. Of course, you got to have the chronosaurus in the pool. And the duck bills nearby. And the cavemen ready to drop a rock on the pteranodon. And there's some dimetrodons and spinacodon back there. And kind of using the box as a background. So, there we go. That is the first Marx Prehistoric Times playset. From 1957, the 3390. Sit for now.